It goes without saying that Spain is a hot holiday destination. Spain exudes an amazing energy and a captivating blend of the past and the present. From the street life of La Rambla to the forest columns to the Moorish arches disappearing into the silent expanse of Cordoba's Great Mosque, Spain is no doubt full of beautiful, breathtaking places, so many that may actually be challenging to decide where to go. And in this video, we will talk about the most incredible places you need to visit in Spain. The Aqueduct Segovia Segovia's massive Roman aqueduct dates back to the first century, one of the most well-preserved in the world. This enormous stone structure spans about 9 miles before it reaches the city center. The city portion has around 167 arches, some double and some single. The aqueduct combined with a cathedral and a fairy tale like castle makes Segovia an ideal place for a day trip from Madrid. After you've seen all the tourist attractions, stop at almost any restaurant in town for Segovia's culinary specialty of roast suckling pig, which is called cochinillo in Spanish. Los Gigantes, Tenerife. Rising between 500 and 800 meters above sea level, Los Gigantes are enormous cliffs that tower above the ocean. Situated in Tenerife, one of Spain's seven Canary Islands, the cliffs are truly a natural beauty. You can enjoy the gorgeous panoramic scenery by climbing up to the viewpoint, strolling the beach down below, or by doing some hikes if you are into hiking. A trip to the nearby black sand beaches, which are made from volcanic ash, can complete your day of fun on the island. The Guggenheim Bilbao Designed by world-famous architect Frank Gehry, the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao has one of the unique designs in the world. The exterior, which is covered with massive sheet of glass and titanium, is waved and curved to catch the sunlight. This modern art museum was built in the year 1997, and its permanent collection includes work by Basquiat, Rothko, Richard Serra, Louis Bourgeois, Anselm Kiefer, as well as Jeff Koons. It is located on the banks of the Nervian River, and capturing the museum's phenomenal architectural design from different angles is as much fun as seeing the art from the inside. San Lorenzo de El Escorial The San Lorenzo de El Escorial is about 45 kilometers northwest of Madrid, was the summer home of Spain's king. In the year 1563, construction started here on a huge complex which would make a monastery, mausoleum, church, royal palace, library, as well as the museum, all taken as a monument to Philip II during his reign. This then resulted in a staggering collection of attractions that were built around 16 courtyards, its room along with the structure, which are connected by 16 kilometers of corridors, furthermore along with the vaulted and fresco ceilings by Tibaldi and the rooms of the lower cloister, the highlights of the monastery are the Pantheon de los Reyes and also the library, a grand room also decorated with Tibaldi frescoes. Inside the palace, you need to see the Bourbon Suite, where the state apartments of Charles IV are decorated with special furnishings and also 338 tapestries. There are also the art-filled private apartments of Philip II. Also, the picture gallery below has an extensive collection of the fine paintings, including works by Hieronymus Bosch, Titian, Albrecht Dürer, El Greco, Tintoretto, Veronese, and Velázquez. Cathedral de Santiago de Compostela, Santiago Spain is full of breathtaking cathedrals. However, the Cathedral in Santiago de Compostela has an extraordinary component. Its construction was completed in 1211. This Baroque and Romanist church features 18-meter-high bell towers that arise above the city. Not only is the cathedral the boreal area of St. James, which is one of the Twelve Apostles, it is also the ending point of the Carmino de Santiago, which is a pilgrimage of about 500 miles that many take through northern Spain. The Prado en Paseo del Arts, Madrid The Prado alone is said to be the world's top art museums for the riches of its collections. But add in the Reina Sofia National Art Museum, the Thyssen Bornemisza Museum as well as the Caixa Forum, all along Madrid's mile-long boulevard, and it may be the world's highest concentration of priceless art treasures. It is not a wonder that this is known as El Paseo del Art, Boulevard of the Arts. After the 2007 expansion which doubled its exhibition space, the Prado added another 12 galleries in the year 2009 to a house of collection of works by Goya and other late 19th century artists. 
The Prado has the world's biggest collection of Spanish art, an impressive continuum from the 12th century medieval works to the early 20th century. It is specially noted for its work from Spain's Golden Age by El Greco, Goya, and Velázquez. However, its riches are not all Spanish. Other highlights are the medieval murals and also retablos, paintings by Flemish as well as Dutch artists. You should see the fantasy world of Hieronymus Bosch and works by Rubens, as well as the Bruegel and famous Italian art. Plaza Mayor, Madrid Walking into the Plaza Mayor is one of those magnificent moments of awe at the 237 balconies facing the square center, complete with the statue of Felipe III on his horse. Enjoy a delicious, a bit overpriced, but who cares because the plaza is just so gorgeous and cold beer on one of the many terraces as you admire the 17th century plaza that was once the bullfight site of public execution, trials during the Spanish Inquisition, and crowning ceremonies. You can also check out traditional San Miguel market located just outside the Plaza Mayor for some tapas and vino. The Great Mosque of Cordoba, Mesquita Once the principal mosque of Western Islam, and it is still known as the Mesquita, the famous Cordoba Mosque is one of the largest mosques worldwide and the finest achievement of Moorish architecture in Spain. Despite all the later alterations that curved out its center to build a Catholic cathedral at its heart, the Great Mosque ranks with Alhambra in Granada as one of the two most brilliant examples of Islamic art and also architecture in Western Europe. Building materials from Roman as well as the Visigothic buildings were used in the construction, which began in 785, then with time it had grown to its present dimensions, its prayer hall with no fewer than 19 aisles, no matter where you stand or where you look, its rows of columns and mirrorish arches line up in symmetrical patterns. The narrow small squares winding streets and also the low whitewash houses with pretty patios visible from the street which fill the old Judaria around the mosque, and a Moorish atmosphere is inherited from its past. Sagrada Familia, Barcelona While the city of Barcelona is just as gorgeous by itself, the unfinished masterpiece by Antoni Gaudi, the Sagrada Familia Church, is just mind-blowing. Construction of the popular building dates back to the year 1882, and even though Gaudi died in the year 1926, its construction still continues today together with numerous other Gaudi buildings in Barcelona. The projections state that Sagrada Familia should be complete in the year 2026 and will include around 18 spires. And once the building is complete, it will most likely to be the tallest church in the world. Despite its status as a construction site, tourists can still enjoy the inside and outside of the church and also go up in one of the skinny spires for epic views of Barcelona. The Alhambra in Genera Life Gardens, Granada no matter how much you have read books about it or how many pictures you have seen of the Granada's Alhambra palaces, the Esmerosh Palace will simply take your breath away. Moreover, the Nasser dynasty's royal palace is the artistic highlight of Spain's Islamic period when al Andalus, as they were known as Andalusia, are represented as the epitome of culture and civilization in Europe's Middle Ages. The Alhambra complex includes several towers, buildings, walls, gardens, and a mosque. Still, this indescribably intricate stone carvings, the delicate filigrees, the magnificent tile-lined ceilings, the graceful arches, and the serene courtyards of the Nasserid Palace will haunt your dreams. Well guys, that's all we have for you today. Which location from Spain was your favorite from today's video? Let us know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed today's episode, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to be up to date with the most exciting content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching! See you again soon in another video!